Everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In March of 2021, I did a video of the must-have networking tools. And this is going to be an update to that video. I've acquired some new tools, and I think people would like to see it. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button. Make sure to hit the bell icon. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You'd find us on Instagram at Mac Telecom Networks. And if you'd like to support the channel, we have an Amazon storefront, and I'll put a link in the description below. Now let's get into seeing these tools. And the first thing we'll talk about is the Klein cable scissors or cable shears. These things are awesome. I use them at pretty much every single job. I do have another pair of shears that are by Platinum Tools, which also work great, but this one has the rubber grip on it. So these shears are meant to cut different types of cable and it's very easy to do. You could also strip your jacket of the cable. And it just works really well. I prefer these over side cutters. Up next, we have a cable organizer or cable comb. And this thing is great, but we don't use it all the time. A lot of the times I will comb out the cables with my hands. But what we would do, we would pop out the middle piece and then fill the blue piece with the cables and then put it back in. We would then dress the cables down with Velcro making it nice and neat. This thing is very easy to use and has saved me tons of time when I'm dressing in my racks. Next tool is the toner by Tempo Communications. When you're trying to locate cables, this thing is awesome. So we would just switch it to the tone. And then on our tone generator, we would hit this button and it will make noise. If we have a keystone wall jack and we don't know where it goes on the patch panel, we would just plug in the RJ45 end. Turn on tone and then hit the button and we'll easily find it. And speaking of cabling, I use the Easy RJ45 crimper. We could either crimp RJ11 or RJ45 with this. We could also use pass through RJ45 ports. I don't use these that much as it could get moisture in and blow our PoE port. When I do make RJ45 ends though, I do put these clear boots on. Having the clear boot on just makes it look 100% more professional. When I do use pass-through, I use the Simply 45 Pro Series. These come with the Cap 45. It's a plastic cap that goes over the end of the RJ45 to protect the conductors. So with the Easy RJ45 Pro tool, all we need to do when the conductors are out of our RJ45 end is push it through and then crimp down. And this will terminate our end. And now we could put on that cap 45. Now you can see on the end, the cap 45, which is protecting the conductors. The next thing we'll talk about, I use pretty well every day. This is the extra deep part organizer by Maximum. A lot of people will probably tell me that the Milwaukee packout boxes are better and I may try those out. Inside this packout box though, we have a bunch of different things. I have my vertical cable VMAX jacks and you could get those in a bunch of different colors. This is just one of my packout boxes. I have another one full of cat six jacks so we have the yellow jacks we have blue jacks and then i have some coax keystone ends the vertical cable vmax jacks are the only jacks that i use right now and they're used with the eye punch tool which we'll get to in a little bit lots of people ask me about these cables that i use between my patch panels and these are six inch patch cables they're done by a company called infinite cables where they're local to me but you could buy them from mono price or from vertical cables you could also buy the slim patch cables in different lengths this is a one foot patch cable and the last thing in this box is keystone blanks I use keystone blanks all the time. If we're using a keystone patch panel and there's empty slots, we'll end up putting those in. Now we'll take a look at patch panels. I use unloaded patch panels and these are keystone patch panels. So if I need to move a keystone jack, it's easy to do. I just pop it out and place it where I need. This is just a no-name brand and I'll put a couple links for on Amazon for where you can find these. But I also do use vertical cable keystone patch panels that have a cable organizer and a tension bar on the back and I'll show that on screen right now. These patch panels are very easy to populate. You just grab your keystone jack and then you put it in and click. Now we have our jack in and it's very easy to cable dress, whereas the old 110 style were very difficult. And a new product to me this year is the Unilite. This is the SLR 2500. I'm not too sure if they make this model anymore, but this is a great light. We go into lots of job sites that have minimal light or no electricity at all. This has 2500 lumen and you could get it higher if you'd like. I've dropped this thing a bunch of times. It's never broken. It's very durable and it's rechargeable. So I would recommend this to anybody. And you could also get headset lights. So if you want to put it around your head when you're going into an attic. Next up is something every technician should be carrying and that is Velcro. And you could get this in a bunch of different colors. I primarily use black Velcro, but you could get blue, red, orange, yellow, green, whichever color you like. Velcro is just easy to use and zip ties, if you tie them too tight, will actually damage the cable. 
And if you're going to be adding other cables in the future, you could just pull the Velcro out and then put more cables in. When we're bundling our cables, we always wanna make the Velcro a little long, so if we're adding more, we could still use the same piece of Velcro. And I like these thinner pieces of Velcro. Some of them have the fluffier top on them, and I don't like that. I think these look a lot cleaner. And the next tool I'll show is the Dremel 4300. This tool has saved us a bunch of time when we're trying to cut out door strike. It comes with a ton of different pieces for different materials, but we primarily just use the one for metal. I've just been getting into door access more as a lot of people have been requesting me to put in Unify access for them. For the price point of just over $100, this will save you a lot of time when you're trying to cut out your electric door strikes. There are other tools that people do use, but I found this one works the best for me. And while we're speaking about security or access control, I use the Mastercraft Precision tool set. These have a lot of different bits that you would find for electronics or access control and it comes with this flexible extension piece. And this last part of the video will be all about cabling and here we have a J hook and J hooks are used to keep your bundles of cable neat in the ceiling and you want to keep away from all other trades. You could also use bridle rings just as long as it's off of the ceiling tile you should be good. Now let's talk about cable testers and I have two different testers to show you. This one's by Tempo Communications and it's just a basic wire map and we could do telephone, coax, network, and then we could tone our cables as well. It has a remote end that we would put at the wall jack and then this we would use at the patch panel. What we would want to see is the pairs one to eight all lining up and I'll show you how that's done. So we'll plug in our patch cable into the RJ45 end and then we'll plug it into the remote end. Once it's plugged in, I'll press network to do a test. And you can see that it's passed and all of our pairs one to eight have lined up. And this is just a basic wire map to tell you if you did your cable terminations correctly. The next cable tester we'll talk about is the Net Alley Link Runner AT2000. So this will test one gigabit copper and one gigabit fiber. We have our wire mapper here and you could buy a bunch of these different modules. I just have the one. So this would be our remote end. This will do a wire map test and it will also show us some switch information such as VLANs, we could do an auto test and also we could change how things are presented and this will print to our computer so we could pull reports we want to do just a basic wire map we'll take the wire mapper end and we'll just plug it into the top and you would see the remote end plugged into a keystone in a faceplate i'll just press select to select the cable test and on the cable test, it shows us that our pairs are good and that it's 3.3 feet away. The feature I find the most useful about the Link Runner AT2000 is the switch. If I'm going to a faceplate and it's already plugged into a switch, I won't be able to tone that out with my toner, unless I buy something like the Fluke Digital Toner. So what I could do, I could press the switch, it will tell me the switch port it's plugged into. I'll plug this into one of my Unify switches so you could see. Now that it's plugged into one of my Unify switches, you could see the TX and the RX is going off. We'll select the switch and then we'll press select. And it tells us the name of the switch is the USW Lite 16 PoE. It says that the model is the UBNT USL 16L. It tells it it's on port 6 and we're in VLAN 40. And it's showing that we're going at a gigabit full duplex. The Link Runner AT2000 is a bit older of a model, but is still very useful in networks today. I will be upgrading this eventually. And we can't talk about cabling without having a cable labeler, and I have two different ones. For faceplates, I use the Brother P-Touch H110. The only problem with this printer, it wastes a lot of tape. If I press power on and then we print the D10, you can see how much tape has been wasted. It's very important that you label all your faceplates and your patch panels as well as the back of your cabling. And for my cable wraps, I use a different labeler. For wire wraps, I use the Brady BMP21 Plus Kit 1. This comes with a rechargeable battery. In the kit, we have places for our labeler and then for two label tapes. We also have my power cord. If you're anything like me, I hate using disposable batteries. So I'll show you how this works. I have my Brady labeler turned on and we'll say this is data jack number 10. So I'll go D10 and then we'll print the label. Once the label is printed, we need to cut it with these two back gray pieces. And this is the label it printed and this will wrap around one of our CAT6 cables. So now I have a CAT6 cable and I'll place the label on it. And once the label is on it, we could wrap it around. And we do this for every single cable at the back of our patch panels. And this last tool is my favorite tool I've used in the last year. 
This is the vertical cable eye punch tool. What this tool does, it crimps your keystone jack so you don't need to punch down every conductor and I'll show you how that's done. So I have my cables laid out into a keystone jack and I'm using T568A, I'm in Canada. Other people will use T568B. And also for anybody in Europe, the standard there typically is to use shielded cabling and they do have an eye punch tool for shielded cables. This tool only works with the vertical cable VMAX jacks. So to terminate this keystone, we just need to place the keystone into the tool. We'll place it upside down and then feed it into the tool. Once it's in the tool, all we need to do is crimp it. Now all of our pairs are punched down into the vertical cable VMAX CAT6 jack. This tool has saved me tons of times when working on large cable jobs and I recommend it to anybody working in cabling. And that's it, that's the must have tools for 2021 to 2022. I'll probably end up doing an updated version of this video in later 2022 as I'll probably acquire some new tools. If you think there's any tools that I should check out, please leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.